Get ready for the Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup. From as close as Cyprus to destinations as far as New Zealand, Chile, and Japan, the best young skiers compete in Whistler at the only event of its kind in North America, the 14th annual Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup. Slalom, giant slalom, and Super G at its best as athletes challenge each other for personal and international glory and set their sights on Olympic stardom. Who will win? The historically dominating Norwegians, the fast and powerful Austrians, the rising Canadian stars? The results may surprise you. Stay with us for all the exhilarating international action today on The Express. Also on today's show, color and excitement as Whistler Village transforms into an international village. The legacy continues with Canadian Olympians mentoring young athletes. For Alex, the biggest surprise is... We find out, do hometown favorites have an advantage? I was impressed. Good job. And what decides who takes first? Is it in the genes or is it the will to win? That and more coming up on today's Whistler Cup special. Welcome to Whistler Mountain, home to some of the best skiing in the world and host to the 14th annual Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup. I'm Johanna Ward and today on the Express, expect a fun, friendly, yet competitive show as we pack three days of world-class competition into just 30 minutes. And you thought the Super G was fast. This is a one-of-a-kind event, bringing together the world's best young skiers from 20 different countries. And you know, this is where many of the world's top skiers started their international ski racing careers. Think Alison Forsyth, Benjamin Reich, Tina Mays, Anya Pearson. And it all started right here at Whistler Mountain some 14 years ago. The first Whistler Cup was held in 1993, and looking back, it was just 10 years ago when World Cup contender Eric Gay competed in the Whistler Cup and took his place on the podium. Also in 96, Swedish skier Anja Persson took the gold in all events, and she went on to win a gold and two bronze at the Winter Olympics. It is a great benchmark along the way, if you will, for, for athletes to make it to here. This is uh, kind of their stepping stone onto provincial team, national team, you know, on and on, like the World Cup podium one day. Many of this year's skiers will be racing for their respective countries on the World Cup and Olympic teams in the next five to ten years. Hi. Hi, Mom. These are the best juvenile skiers from all corners of the globe. And for young skiers who aspire to join provincial and national teams, this is a very important event. It's also a fun one. Imagine hanging at Whistler Village with 400 other kids from all over the world. Most countries arrive in Whistler early to give the kids a chance to test their runs, check their equipment, and settle into life in the village. Okay, bye. For the coaches, one of the first orders of business is to go over the ground rules. All skis must be equipped with unaltered ski brakes. Racer inspection will be from the top to the bottom. The other important duty in the coaches' meeting is to establish the racing order. 20, Nagui, Austria. 21, Amdahl, Norway. The athletes, of course, have an important meeting of their own. Welcome everybody to the Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup 2006. Of course, the Whistler Cup is not just about having fun and building friendships. It's challenging, motivating, inspiring, and competitive. Let's have a look at highlights from the first races. This includes the Kinder 2, that's the 13 and 14 year olds in the Super G, and Kinder 1, that's the 11 and 12 year olds in a brand new event this year, the Combi. The sun was shining on the Whistler slopes, perfect weather conditions to kick off the first races of the weekend. The 13 and 14 year olds, the Kinder 2s, attacked the mountain in the speed event, the Super G. Oh, 
It was a very good race. Yes. <laughs> well ahead of the others, leading the Kinder 2 Women's Super G was Karen Nagy of Austria with the time of 1.16.49. Second place went to Germany's Raffaella Hartel with the time of 1.17.58. A mere tenth of a second later, taking third with a time of 1.17.68 was Austria's Miriam Puchner. The Europeans continued to dominate on the men's Kinder 2 Super G. With a time of 1.14.25, Austria's Frederik Berthold took first. In a close second at 1.14.48, Dominic Schwager of Germany, and placing third just two tenths of a second behind the first place finisher with a time of 1.14.71, Norway's Johan Kekoksen. New this year to the Whistler Cup is the Combi, a demonstration event combining the slalom, giant slalom, and super G. Taking the gold in the Kinder 1 women's combi was Slovenia's Ula Hafner, untouchable at 51.98. Canada's first medal went to Kaylee Darlington. The Whistler Mountain Ski Club member earned a silver for her time at 54.06. Following just a tenth of a second later at 54.16 was Valentina Valapachova of the Czech Republic. Slovenia also took the gold in the Kinder 1 men's combi. Andras Poglaktik finished first with the time of 50.35. Italy's Simone Anselmo grabbed silver at 51.80, and Sandy Vietz of USA placed third with a time of 52.90. Adrenaline was still running high when the races wrapped for Friday, as the competitors moved on to the social and celebratory aspects of the Whistler Cup. What do you think of the Whistler Cup? Oh, it's also fun. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It's great meeting a bunch of people from other countries. Well, I think it's really cool to be here, to just made it. Awesome! Bye, bye, bye. The Whistler is so good. I'm so excited. I'm... This is a big mountain, so I've got lost a couple of times, but it's pretty fun. It is beautiful here, and the countryside, and the people are nice, and it's cool. <laughs> many nations and it's uh, fun to compete with other people. Well, there's tons of opportunities to meet people from every different country. Whistler Cup rocks! Whistler Cup kids! kids. Thanks, Thanks Whistler, Whistler Cup! Cup. Deutschland. The Parade of Nations wound its way through Whistler Village, a chance for everyone at Whistler to feel a part of the event and a chance for the athletes to show some national pride. <laughs> Once everyone gathered at the base of the mountain, the celebration continued with the opening ceremony. This event is so very special. The United States with 10 athletes. have two full days of races yet to cover and a lot of questions to be answered. Did you know it's a goal of the Alpine Canada Ski Association to make our country the top ski nation by 2010? Why you ask? Well the answer may be obvious, Vancouver's 2010 Winter Olympic Games. So how do you go about training future Olympians? Having former Olympians ready and willing to help is a powerful start. I see a lot of my old teammates and colleagues, so it's a it's part of the ski Canadian ski family coming together, the international ski family coming together. It's a legacy that just keeps being handed down. I remember fondly uh, getting a Nancy Green ribbon from Dave Irwin, and then uh, uh, being at a training camp with Steve Podborski and, and and raced with Todd Brooker. And now, you know, working kind of underneath uh, Ken Reed, it's 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 important to see see this expertise, these, these, these people who have accomplished so much to come back and give back to the sport and that's what I feel like I'm doing too.
There are so many things that make the Whistler Cup a success year after year. Amazing coaches, behind the scenes support, and of course the real sign of success is how it affects the athletes. Up next, Jack Christie introduces us to a member of the Whistler ski team who is also an Olympic hopeful. And as Jack finds out for this young lady, it's all about the speed. I'm Brim Bembo, I'm 14 years old, I'm from Whistler, BC. Apple-cheeked, freckle-faced Bryn Benbow has been serious about ski racing for almost half her young life. The Whistler student caught the speed bug six years ago and has been bashing her way through slalom gates and dashing downhill at top speed ever since. I like to win the World Cup. I want to make 2010 Olympics, but that probably won't happen, but I'd like to be in the Olympics someday. As a member of Team Canada, Bryn Bendel has figured out that balancing schoolwork with skiing is just like racing. In order to succeed, you have to stay out in front. Which is where Bryn plans to be as she carves her way towards the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympic Games and beyond. You're representing your country, you're representing where you came from and you come down the hill and if you do really well, it's just great to be representing Canada. When you love the sport, it's all about speed. But this weekend, we're also looking at results. Saturday included a full day of races, and here's a look at the highlights. Saturday on the mountain saw a mix of excellent ski weather conditions, clear skies in the morning and high clouds for the afternoon, keeping the track hard for skiing at its most technical, the quick skill testing turns that make up the slalom course. It was a tight race for the K2 women's slalom with a combined time from two runs of 131.19. Norway's Mona Loset took the gold. Always good. <laughs> Did you think before you came to Canada that you could do this well? No, not really. In second place, Devin Delaney from the USA finished with a time of 131.87, placing third less than a second after the first place finisher, Slovakia's Jana Skarkova, at 131.99. On the K2 men's side, Austria's Frederik Berthold won his second gold medal of the weekend with a combined time of 125.10, a full two seconds ahead of the rest. Yes, I'm very happy because to win it's so an, at an international race, it's super. The Austrians continue to hold court on the podium as Marcel Mathis plays second with a time of 127.16. Yes. How do you feel about that? I feel good. Yeah. It was another European sweep of the top three when Norway's Robin Brody placed third with a time of 127.43. I think I do it great. Good race. And how do you feel about that? Well, I'm, I'm proud. Faster than slalom and with more gates than Super G, the K1s tested their combined technical and speed skills on the giant slalom. Winning her second gold medal in just two days, Slovenia's Ula Hafner crossed the line at 57.41. The Czech Republic's Valentina Valapachova moved into second place at 58.54. With a big jump to 1 minute and 23 tenths of a second, we found Canadian team member Samantha Bisner winning bronze. I didn't think I did too well, but when I came down and I looked at my time, it was pretty good. The men's K1 slalom was another victory for Slovenia's Andras Poglaktik. He raced across the finish line well ahead of the pack with a time of 56.06. .06. Second place went to Italy's Marco Esposito for his time at 57.64. And just one hundredth of a second later, Canada's Ford Sweat took bronze for his time at 57.65. Sweat is a member of the Whistler Mountain Ski Club. Ford Sweat comes through. I thought I had a very, very good run. I don't know if it could have been much better at all. The Sierra
Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup is the only event of its kind in North America. And what does it take to bring together almost 400 athletes, their coaches, their parents, visiting from all over the world? I have one word for you, commitment. That was beautiful. Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup is just a grand opportunity for our athletes in Canada to see the world's best at a very young age. Of course, all ages can get in on the action and do. Volunteers consisting mostly of parents and former athletes clock countless hours to make these three days run smoothly. There's over 250 volunteers, many of whom have been working all year round for this event. No one's paid, everyone works very hard in this event, so it's pretty exciting. It's also exciting for the staff at Whistler Mountain to play host to such a dynamic affair. We love this event. We've been doing it for 14 years now and it just keeps uh, getting better and better. With the perfect setting, athletes ready to race and a wealth of eager volunteers, there's just one more essential component to ensuring the success of the Whistler Cup. Sponsorship from committed companies. Well, Sierra Wireless is proud to be a title sponsor of the Whistler Cup. We feel it's an important stepping stone in the development of young racers, both athletically and culturally. Well, you know, it's all about the international nature of this race. Uh, we as a company operate in over 50 different countries. We have 70,000 employees. Here we're seeing over 400 young racers from 20 different countries. It's great not only to uh, host them, but to allow our Canadian athletes compete against some of the best in the world. Yes, the Whistler Cup is as cultural as it is competitive. Perhaps an opportunity for the stereotypically laid-back Canadians to push ahead and finish the weekend with a gold medal. It goes to Fort Sweat. In second place, Marco Esposito. And finally, a dominating victory for Slovenia, Andres Bogdanic, our K1 Giants champion. Congratulations on being first. Did it, how do you feel about that? I'm very happy because this is Canada. I'm from Slovenia. It's, it's great. In third place, from Team Canada, Samantha Bizarre. In second place, from the Czech Republic, Valentina Volopichova. And the gold medalist from Slovakia, Ula Kapner. Our GS K1 winner. Congratulations, you came in first. How do you feel about that? Um, special. Happy, very happy. In third place from Team Norway, let's hear it for Robin Brauti. Second place, Marcel Matisse from Team Austria. Fantastic performance from Federic Berthold from Team Austria. Congratulations, a great run. All right, let's hear it for the K2 Slovenian Zero Wireless Cup champions of the world. There are two people in third place. Let's mention first the Slovene Ruska. And the tie for third place from Slovakia, Jana Zvakrova. Second place goes to Devin Delaney from Team USA. Gold medal medaille d'or. Team Norway is Mona Lose. Let's hear from K2 Slovene Lady and champions of the Super Wireless Whistler Cup. With one full day of racing left to go, and the Austrians and Slovenians leading golden, the question remains, who will win the coveted Whistler Cup? Awards are not just about recognizing who came first. It's also an acknowledgement of ambition, perseverance, dedication. Of course, for many of the fans, the stats mean nothing compared to seeing the athletes try their best. Mary Paborski, I'm 14 years old, and I ski for the Whistler Mountain Ski Club. When your father is a world ski champion, expectations are high that you just might have inherited some of that lust for speed yourself. For that reason, Maddie Podborski finds herself under special scrutiny each time she starts a race. Not that the 14-year-old puts nearly the amount of pressure on herself that some of her teammates do. Like most kids, she just likes to go as fast as possible. And whether or not she ends up on the podium like her dad, Maddie is just happy to lay down a good run, no matter what the conditions. Sure, she's glad to be there to share the moment with her Whistler Mountain Ski Club teammates, but when her race day is over, she's equally focused on getting into a really good university. 
I'm going to carry on to fifth and I'm hoping to do really well up there and I just want to have fun with ski racing and do well. Having an Olympian as a father may have made ski racing an obvious choice for Maddie. But as Jack Christie explains, for Alexander Binks, putting the time and energy in has everything to do with the Whistler Cup. Over the past three years since he first took up ski racing, Vancouver-based Alex Binks has learned a lot. And it's not just about seeing how fast he can whip through the gates without wiping out. The Prince of Wales secondary school student has discovered the merits of training hard and developing a work ethic that should serve him well no matter what comes next. When you're not on the slope, what kind of other work do you do? Uh, just a lot of dry land training. We'll race around course just, uh, to get really Ridley fit. Had a time this I uh, like to play a little hockey too, you know, good for the legs. A 49 <laughs> points. For Alex, the biggest surprise is how easily everything has fallen into place since winning the second race he ever entered. Before a race, Binks listens to classic rock songs for inspiration to climb that stairway to heaven, which he hopes leads to a spot on the Canadian Alpine ski team. If it's Alexander's goal to ski for the Canada Alpine ski team, then I'd say he's at the right place. The Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup is considered a launching pad for aspiring young skiers. And as we have a look at the highlights from Sunday's races, you can definitely see why. Sunday's difficult weather conditions did not hold back any of the ski racers on their final day of competition. Limited visibility along the slalom course made navigating the gates even more challenging than usual. First place finisher in the K1 women's slalom left no surprises. Slovenia's Ula Hafner won her third gold medal of the three-day competition with a combined time of 109.88. The silver medal went to another familiar face as Valentina Valopachova finished at 11031 to win her third medal of the weekend. It was great. It was really great. I left slalom so it it wasn't be better. <laughs> With a time of 11283, USA's Madeline Wilkin found her place on the podium, winning a bronze. The K1 men's slalom saw Italy's Simone Anselmo move back to medal status, winning a gold medal for his combined time of 11427. The fog continued to make visibility difficult on the K2 giant slalom course, but that didn't stop the European K2 women racers from doing their best and winning across the board. Austria's Valentina Fankhauser won gold with a time of 107.44. I'm Valentina Fankhauser and I'm from Austria. And congratulations, you came first. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel really good. It was a very great race. Following a full second and a half behind, Austrian teammate Karen Nagy won silver, crossing the finish at 108.98. Slovenia's Urska Ahak placed third, winning a bronze medal for her time of 109.90. The foggy weather conditions cleared somewhat for the men's K2 giant slalom, proof that weather conditions can be as unpredictable as race results. Austrian Frederick Berthold, who had been golden throughout the weekend, finished third, winning bronze with a time of 106.97. Second place at 106.13 went to Michael Anarchy of the USA. Awesome. It's crazy. I mean, I come from like a hill that's about 180 feet, and to, win a G to do this well in GS is just awesome. First across the finish line in the K2 men's giant slalom with a considerable lead at 105.25, Canadian team member Eric Reed. And were you surprised at the outcome of today's race? Oh, very, because I've having I've been having a tough time in GS this year, so this is absolutely amazing. Reed is a member of the Banff Alpine Racers in Alberta and son to past Olympian and president of Alpine Canada Ken Reed. It's a benchmark to see where you are compared to the world. And Does that mean you're first compared to the world? No, not necessarily. <laughs> I just had a really good run and I, I know I'm up there in GS, but just, I have some work to do in slalom and super G now.
congratulations to all of the racers. Almost 400 coming from 20 different countries. You know, there are so many amazing components to this Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup, but the most important, the athletes. Young talents like Richard Long. Hi, I'm Richard Long. I'm from uh, Collingwood, Ontario, and I'm 14 years old. Look out, world. Here comes Richard Long. Already one of the top young skiers in Canada, this Ontario native still has a lot of growing to do before he's ready to move beyond the ranks of K2 racers. Earlier this year, Richard won four gold medals at the Canadian Juvenile Ski Championships. Here at the Whistler Cup, where he competed against the world's best, he achieved his goal of finishing in the top five. We're getting better. We're getting uh, stronger Canadian teams moving up. That, uh... We're getting a lot stronger. Yeah. It's good because Canada's always been in the shadow, but we're, we're really starting to show ourselves now. It's good. After three full days of camaraderie and competition, the Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup wrapped up with a spirited awards ceremony. The anticipation was high as everyone waited to find out which country won the coveted Whistler Cup for Top Nation. But first, Recognition of the day's top racers. From Team USA, Madeline Wilkin. Madeline Wilkin. From the Czech Republic, Valentina Bolokachova. From Slovenia, love welcome, Ula Hafner. Congratulations, A1 Rome Ladies Champion. In second place with a silver medal from Italy, Marco Esposito. First place from Italy, Simon Anselmo. K1 Slovens champion. In third place, the Slovene Urska. Second place, congratulations to Team Austria, Karin Nagy. And our winner, another Austrian, Valentina Pankhausa. Women's GS champions. Let's hear it for them. Third place from Team Austria, Frederic Bertol. Silver medal from Team USA, Michael and Kenny. And our winner, Eric Reed. <laughs> Individual Canadian athletes were recognized for their weekend achievements. Samantha Bisner. The Nancy Green Cup goes to Karel Bouchard. The winner for the uh, K1 Award, the Dave Murray Cup. Let's congratulate Ford Sweat for his outstanding performance. Eric Reed. Hold it up, everybody. There you go. And finally, the moment everyone was waiting for, the top nations at the 2006 Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup. Team Italia, the Squadra Azzurra. Congratulations to Team Austria. For Österreich. Now the top country overall, Austria. For complete race results, check out the Whistler Cup website. Now, as we've mentioned, this is the only event of its kind and caliber in all of North America. And after watching the action and feeling the excitement over the last three days, it's obvious how much this event means to the athletes on a personal and professional level. Now, in the coming years, be sure to keep watching for many of these athletes to continue their ski racing success on the World Cup circuit. I'm Johanna Ward, and from all of us at Shaw TV, thanks for watching. Hope to see you next year at the Sierra Wireless Whistler Cup.